Hello everybody, I am Just Lance and I would like to welcome you all back for another video. Um, first off, how are you all doing? Anyways, you can tell by the title that this isn't going to be a shave video. This is the third part of my So You Want to Be a Wet Shaver, uh, or part three in my series, So You Want to Be a Wet Shaver. I can't remember exactly what I said. We were going to go over in the next video on part two. I watched it earlier, but totally spaced it um, I'm just gonna kind of wing it from here on out anyways this parts gonna be about as the title says pre shaves and post shaves anyways first a little bit of housekeeping to go to do um, I got a comment from a gentleman named RJ Carter if you are a new subscriber welcome very much to the channel or welcome so much to the channel um, appreciate the support and a new subscriber is Rick Thorne. Anyways, Rick, welcome to the channel. Uh, thanks for being part of part of this little little trip. I call wet shaving, or that we know as wet shaving. I don't call it, everybody calls it that. Anyways, so in case you're unfamiliar with my last two videos, anybody out there that's unfamiliar. Um, this series is aimed towards three groups of people. First group is those who are thinking about getting into wet shaving and not quite sure where they want to take that plunge because, well, the startup cost can be a little bit higher than, you know, run down and grabbing the Mach 3 or joining Harry's or Dollar Shave Club or, you know, Gillette On Demand, whatever. Um, the second, second group are, you know, those who are brand new to wet shaving and you're like, okay, I'm going to try this, but where do I go? But the third group, the main group, is those who are like me, are blind. Um, if you don't know, if you haven't figured out yet through watching my videos, um, I'm blind. Been blind my whole life, one degree or another. Uh, did pretty good up until February of 2002. In fact, I was watching the opening uh, opening ceremonies of the 2002 Salt Lake City Winter Olympics, and I looked and watching a 27-inch TV. Had no problem seeing it, and all of a sudden, it looked as though a thick bank of fog descended around me, and I went upstairs, told my girlfriend, "Yeah, my sight. I think it's done." And, you know, I've been dealing with a uh, pretty, pretty poor vision since then. Um, my vision is 2600 from what my eye doctor says. In other words, what somebody with perfect vision 2020 sees at 20 feet or 1600 feet, I need to be 20 feet or closer to see it. So if they're looking at a mountain at 1600 feet off in the distance or more, I gotta be 20 feet or closer to see it. Anyways, so enough about that. Um, anyways, so yeah, pre-shaves and post-shaves is for those who can see. I have not shaved yet. I will be doing that before I go into the pre-shave. So let's go ahead and let's talk about post-shaves. Pre-shaves and post-shaves are just products that you apply to your face pre-shave pre and post-shave. In other words, Probably should apply before the shave, probably should apply after. First off, let's look at pre-shaves. Now, there's lots out there. There are pre-shave oils, pre-shave lotions, pre-shave soaps. Um, if you are using pre-shave oil, uh, it can go ahead and cause you to clean your uh, brushes more often. If you're using natural hair brushes, synthetics, maybe somewhat, but not as much. Um, you know, that's why I like pre-shave soaps. Now, I don't have any pre-shave soaps, any pre-shave lotions um, or oils. Now, in the past, I have used coconut oil, and that works pretty good, believe it or not. Just get a little bit in your hand, rub your hands together, and rub it around your face. Um, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, they make a little thing called a cube, which is great for the pre for pre-shave. It gives you a layer of slickness and it's a lather booster. In other words, it makes your lather 
kicks it up a notch. Anyways, what I use for pre-shaves is two products, and they are brushless shave creams. Um, at least one truly is a brushless shave cream. One, from what I understand, kind of is. And the first product is... One moment. Here it is. This, it's called Takata. And it comes in a little plastic tub. You unscrew the tub. It's got kind of a berry scent. It smells really nice. Basically, what pre-shave soaps and cream or brushless shave creams are is just basically you get your face wet, you rub it on, and it gives you a nice layer of slickness. You don't have to take and work up with a brush. Another one I like using, and it is Cremo or Cremo. Um, this is their cooling formula that comes in too. Really thin lather if you try building it up with a brush, but it works great as pre-shave, and that's a peppermint smell. So it goes good with a couple of couple of my soaps, but not a lot of them. Uh, or if I just don't care about the combination, I use it sometimes. Not a whole lot, but once in a while. So, show you what you do. You go ahead, first off, you get your face wet. And you don't have to sit there and splash a bunch of water. Just get some moisture on your face. Now, I shaved about three days ago. And um, I just got out of the shower. If you are new to this, you know, you want to have your face, your whiskers nicely hydrated. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Takata. Okay? And let me dry my hands because I don't want to get a bunch of, you know, too much water into that brushless cream. And I'm just going to dip my fingers in it get some out. You don't have to get a lot. Now, I'm going to go ahead, rub my hands together. Got a little bit of moisture on my hands. Just rub it into your whiskers. Now, nice thing about pre-shave oils, lotions, soaps, you don't have to apply them every pass. Um, just apply them once, and it will help protect your face for that first first bit of stubble reduction. So, anyways, and then as you can hear, rasping in my whiskers. If you can hear that, anyways, that's thoroughly on there. Anyways, go and rinse my hands. Now my next step is going to be lathering up and um, going ahead and shaving my head, my face, and then my head, and then I'll be back and talk about post shaves. Oh, let me put the cap on here. Anyways, so I shall see you all in a minute. All right, everybody. I just had an absolutely awesome, awesome, awesome shave. Um, a little bit of a breakout spot right here. But that pretty much simmers down after I do my post shave. All right. So for the pre-shave, we used this Takata. Uh, kind of has a berry scent to it. Um, brushless shave cream. Has a pre-shave. Another thing that we have, which we can use for pre-shave, is Cremal Cooling, which has a minty smell. Um, you can use any of the Cremal creams as a pre-shave if you want. Um, there's pre-shave oils that come in many, many scents. West India limes, sandalwood, uh, mint, just many, many different scents. Um, there are pre-shave soaps, such as the, the uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Prickly Pear, um, Artisan Accoutrements, uh, 
the cube. Uh, many, many others. Uh, pre-shaved lotions from Parasso. Uh, just all sorts of stuff out there you can get for pre-shave. Now, for post-shaves, what I use for post-shave is a couple of different things. One thing you can use. Now, one thing, if you get a cut, they have what's called a styptic pencil, which basically, if you cannot see it, um, it's basically a little plastic knob down here at the bottom, and it's got a clear thing. It's a tube. Pull it off, and it's a, a aluminum styptic. I forget exactly what it is, but basically you wet that, and then you rub it onto the spot that you cut, and it clamps down on those um, capillaries, and it stops the bleeding pretty quick. Another thing you can use if you want feedback to see if you shave too close or just to seal up any little nicks or cuts that you might have is called alum or alum. This is an Omega alum um, stick. They also come in a block such as this. This is what's left of my Razor Rock alum block. Alum block. That's also good if your fingers are a little slick, you can wet your fingers rub it on that allen block and it makes, gives you some grip. This Omega, you just unscrew the top, like so, and then your stick is under there. The way you use it, is you get your face wet first. So I put some water on my face. And then I always like to just run the alum right under the water. And then you just do 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 do. Ain't too bad. Not too bad at all considering I ran that adjustable razor. Or that fat boy. Wide open on nine. Which you'll learn about in the razor video. And you just run it around. It's got some steam. But little bitty nicks and cuts. It will... Um, so up, and this is actually a mineral from the ground called potassium alum. Anyways, so you let the alum set on your face for a short bit, maybe 20-30 seconds. I usually let that set until the stinging mellows out. Now it will bite you if you've gotten too close and you got some irritation. It will. It can light you up. So anyways, let's rinse that off. Some people, they like using alum after every shave. I used to. I don't as much anymore. I just do it occasionally. But yeah, I'm going to let the alum dry off. It doesn't take long. But I'm going to let it dry off. And then I'm going to re-put the top back on. Which you want to do that with your styptic pencil too. And you can also buy styptic matches. Which is basically a one-time use. It comes in a book of like 20. You pull it out like a match. Get it wet. And you just rub it on the spot. Then you can throw it out. Because if you got a pretty good cut. You know, it's like you'll have, you know, you'll get blood on your alum or on your styptic pencil, so you definitely want to wash that off. Now, the next thing I like to use for my post shave, it's good for toning your skin, and it's called Witch Hazel. Um, you can pick Witch Hazel up for a couple of bucks at the Dollar General. Um, many stores carry their own brand. Um, this is made by Dickinson's. There's a company called Humphreys, which people really like. Another company called Thayer's, which people like as well. You just put some of that in your hand. And I like rubbing it on. Everywhere I shave. And I mean, this stuff, a bottle of it will last you, oops, forever. And it won't break the bank. And that always, I, I, some people don't think it does good, 
uh, has much of an effect on their skin. I like it. I really do. And sometimes you get a little bit of a stain. But today, nope, no stain. Okay, now, that's the witch hazel. The next product I like to do, and I always like to put my aftershave on afterwards. Today, the aftershave comes from my Dollar General, and it's just called aftershave. If you're familiar with the cologne called Chaps, and you always want to shake up your aftershave, mix those ingredients up. This kind of smells like the Chaps cologne that they used to have. I don't know if they make Chaps or not anymore. I don't think they do. But rub your hands together, put something in your hand, rub it together. And I like to rub it on my head. Now, some will burn more than others. Um, there are some aftershaves made by artisans which is basically, you know, um, small companies, people, a lot of them working out of their homes, making soap. And, and trust me, just because they're doing it at home doesn't mean it's a bad product. They uh, have a lot of regulations and, and rules they got to follow. But um, some of them make their own aftershaves, and they use witch hazel, some use alum. But, you know, they won't have the alcohol burn. Now some, if you look, or have somebody look on the ingredients, if you're visually impaired, if that first ingredient is alcohol, yeah, it's going to light you up good. It's going to, it's going to, well, maybe not light you up, but it'll bite you. You'll know it's there. If it's water and then alcohol, then, you know, it's not as bad. Hmm, I love the smell of that stuff. Now, the final product I like to put on, um, actually I usually do it in reverse, it's called an aftershave balm. This is made by Nivea, you can pick it up at Walmart, Target, lots of different places. Shake it up, and it's just basically a lotion that puts moisture back in your skin, and uh, Just puts them back in the moisture, and you put a little bit, you don't need a lot, just a little bit, rub it on your head, if you're a head shaver like I am, um, rub it on your face, your cheeks, upper lip, chin, neck, and if there's a little bit left, guys, hey, even us dudes need to moisturize, but anyways, so yeah, that's, that's pre-shave right there. Um, real simple, and you know, it makes it. It's great for your skin. There's lots of post shave products out there. Trumper skin food, um, just all sorts of stuff out there, and you know, and, uh, it's just a nice way to pamper yourself. So, anyways, that's post and pre shave. Anyways. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you all in the next video. I'm, I'll figure out what I'm going to talk about. I ain't going to tell you what I'm going to talk about because it'll probably change. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, it's pre-shave and post-shave. Um, if you haven't seen the other videos, go ahead. You can go on my channel. You can look on play in playlist. I got one playlist in it. So you want to be a wet shaver playlist. You can check that out. The other two videos. Um, and see, see, see about it. Anyways, um, likes, comments, subscriptions, always appreciate it. If you subscribe, please whack that bell to go ahead and be notified whenever I drop a new video. Um, if you comment, I'll do my best to get back to you. Maybe not immediately, but I will definitely get back to you before the next video pops out. And, uh, you know, if you ever need to reach me, have any questions about anything, whether it's shaving related, blindness, um, guide dogs, canes, whatever, you can reach me at justlance59 at gmail.com, all lowercase, no spaces. Anyways, y'all take it easy. For my normal subscribers, thank you. I hope y'all have been having great shaves and wonderful mail calls. Anyways, um, y'all take it easy, and I shall see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Bye-bye now.
Hey everybody, there's one thing I forgot when I was um, applying my alum. Something I forgot to say, which is kind of important for those of you who have very low vision or no vision at all. When you apply your alum, you rub it around all the places on your face that you shaved. Um, cheeks, upper lip, chin, neck, wherever it was you shaved whiskers off of, just rub it around there. And uh, one quick tip, if you get an alum block, if you have a wide rubber band like the um, type of rubber bands you get around some vegetables or like the rubber bands that you see them put on lobster claws um, for the market, take, put one of those on the bottom of the alum block. That way so you got a little, you know, that way so you can kind of grip it there because alum blocks, um, they are a little slick when they get wet. And that's just a real easy way to go ahead and make sure that you got a little extra grip because if it slips out of your hand and lands in the sink or lands on the floor, it might just might shatter. Anyways, so yeah, that's just what I wanted to add. Anyways. Um, hope you all enjoyed the video and talk to you later. Bye bye now.